Welcome to this week's video update for Friday, November 18th. It was a pretty crazy week. We had a lot of adjusting trades. We had some opening trades and we closed out of some profitable trades. So uh, we had a lot of adjusting trades and, and, and you'll notice that you'll go through periods where you'll see a lot of some of the markets have a pretty fairly sizable one directional move, which, uh, which kind of pushes the price outside of your range and you'll have to make a lot of adjusting trades. And that's kind of the, the week that we had uh, this week. You'll also find periods of time where, you're, where price stays in a very narrow range for extended periods of time, and you'll constantly just be taking after win, taking winner after winner after winner. So just, just understand that, that you're gonna have periods like this, and it's not a big deal. We're making the adjustments. We still got a lot of time left in the current expiration cycle. Uh, today's expiration Friday for the November cycle, but in the December and January cycles, we still have a lot of time left to to earn back some of those some of the money that we've made on these adjustments. So let's take a look. Uh, remember to get here, you're just going to the navigation alerts, click on income alerts, and that's going to bring up all the trades date posted as we made them. So if we go back, let's go back to Monday at the beginning of the week, which was November 14th and start with the first trade we made, which was an adjusting trade in GDX. So uh, GDX made a significant move down, so we had to roll down our calls. Let's go to the platform and take a look at GDX first. So our calls were out here, we, we rolled those down, and so now price is sitting right here, so it's, it's still fairly centered. So all we do is, is wait and, and continue to hope that stays in a specific range. If we need to make another adjustment, we will. Otherwise, we'll wait and take that off for a small profit. The next trade we made was on Monday also. It was another adjusting trade in IWM. So IWM has, has continued to move higher. So we took off our put side and simultaneously added another iron condor uh, to take in more credit. So let's take a look at IWM. So here's the here's the second adjustment we made. So we put on another iron condor. Price is right here, so it's still fairly centered. So we'll continue to wait and let that theta decay in that trade. The initial iron condor we, we were in, we had to make the adjustment on. We, uh, we have the call side left. So remember, this is the losing side. Price is way out here, so it's outside of our range. However, you don't ever touch the tested side. Okay, we, we took off the, the put side for a full profit on that. We leave the call side on. If, if, we, if it doesn't make a move down, then we're gonna take a loss on the call side. Uh, however, that's, that's the other reason that we initiate this additional iron condor to collect more credit and, and get back some of that loss. Now there's a, we've got a lot of time left in December, so in the December contract, so it's not uh, unforeseeable that we make a move down, we get we make money on this second adjustment iron condor and the initial one that we that we put on too. So we'll just be patient and wait to see what happens there. Uh, let's see. The next trade was an adjusting trade in XLU. So we rolled down our calls. XLU had a significant move down. So let's go to the platform and take a look at XLU. So we rolled down our call, so now we've got a, this tight range here, so we're gonna just hope that this stays in, in a range here. If not, we'll make another adjustment and continue to manage our XLU strangle. Another trade we made on Monday, if you remember, we got a lot of alerts coming through on Monday. Uh, this was an opening trade in oil. So we put on, uh, we're taking advantage of, of high IV in oil. So if we take a look at this strangle, price is right here. Um, you know, we, we always start this off pretty centered, so it's had a little bit of a move up, but still well within our range. So we're not making any adjustments or doing anything in addition in our oil position at this time, except for waiting. And then let's go to the next page here. Let's go back to, back to the first page. I like to do these in order as we took them during the week. So we did an opening trade in EWW, and this is one that we, we already took off. So we opened this trade on Monday, and we already took it off for a profit 
of about 40% of max profit. Um, so that one, that was a good trade. We did a closing trade in uh, GLD. So that was a 40% a plus winner in, in just three days, thanks to a huge contraction in implied volatility. So we're still, uh, you know, we got a quick profit there and then we're still holding the put side of that GLD iron condor. So let's take a look at GLD. So here's GLD, here's our put side. So it had a good move down in gold. So we're still holding onto that put side. We exited the iron condor for a profit and then we put on another iron condor to try to collect some more credit. So this is the process. You're, if, a, if a trade goes against you, you're holding on to the losing side, taking off the profitable side, and adding another iron condor to continue to, to, to collect more credit. Let's go back to our list here. Uh, uh, I already mentioned, we already went over the adjusting opening trade in gold in GLD. Had a closing trade in EEM for a nice profit in just five days. So in these, you know, take a look at EEM. Let's go to the charts and look look what happened to implied volatility. This is what this is what we're looking for. You're putting on the strangle and the implied volatility is high. Just a few days later, we have a, a crush of implied volatility where the implied volatility is just sucked out of the out of the market, and we were able, able to take that trade off for a nice quick profit. Uh, let's see, then we had a we had a new opening position. We sold a strangle in EWZ. So let's take a look at EWZ. Again, you know, we had extremely high implied volatility. We had a good, good contraction in implied volatility, but we've still got this position on. You can see we're we're right centered, we're profitable, but we haven't gotten enough profit out of the trade to uh, to, to close the trade out yet. So hopefully we'll Stay in a, a fairly narrow range and take that off next week. Then our next trade was a, we closed a straddle in SLV, which is the silver ETF. And again, took a nice profit in that in just five days. So when this, when this volatility contracts, sometimes it happens pretty quick. Let's take a look at SLV and what happened there. So we put that trade on at the beginning of the week, kind of the same story as EEM, just had a, a, a severe contraction in implied volatility, which allowed us to take that straddle off for a nice profit uh, in, just, in just a few days, in just five days. In SPY, we did another adjusting trade. So we had an iron condor, so we bought back the put side because SPY continues to move up. And then we added another iron condor in SPY to continue to collect more credit. So let's take a look at SPY. And as you can see, we've had a nice contraction in volatility. However, it's, it's, the price has been kind of one directional and moved out of our range. So here's the, here's the uh, tested side, or here's, the, uh, here's the, uh, the call side of that iron condor that we still have on. So as we, if we get a move down, We'll be able to take that off for small profit. And in addition to that, we added another iron condor uh, to collect more credit. And that's fairly centered, so we'll continue to wait. If you'll notice one thing I did a little bit differently on this one, our initial iron condor was five contracts, and the new iron condor that I added was, was only three. And part of the reason is, is because implied volatility has gotten so low in SPY. So if volatility was still up here, I would have done more contracts, but that's just a part of, part of managing, your, managing your risk, managing your credits, managing your theta. So I did a, a little bit of a reduced size. And then let's see, I think, yeah, then we had a couple more trades. So we had a closing trade in EWW, I already mentioned that. We took that off for a nice profit in just four days. And then today, Friday, November 18th, we had one other trade and that was an opening trade in the Euro. And that's the futures contract forward slash 6E. So let's take a look at that trade. If you look at 6E, it's had, a, it's had a big move down. We haven't had any trade in it, any trade in during that period, 
but IV is, is up here, IV percentile 86, IV rank at 74, so it was a great time to put on this position with high IV, so you can take a look at what we've got here. Typical one standard deviation strangle, and it, this price is still uh, extremely centered as we just put this one on today. So I hope this was helpful, and we'll talk to you next week.